So we're here in Ottawa at the conclusion of the AGM for 2013 for the second Canada. We're here with President uh, John Tocamp, who was acclaimed for another four years. Congratulations, John. Thank good you, man. Um, so it's been a very, uh, you know, a good year for, for the sport. You're showing another surplus, which is exciting, and uh, you've got some cash reserves and big events have taken place to about Alberta. Tell us how you're assessing the year and, and what you feel has been accomplished for the sport in Canada. Well, certainly from a cycle. Canada administration purpose, uh, uh, perspective it's actually been a very very solid year we've grown again the revenues significantly this year um, we reported the uh, the revenues and our, our budget is doubled in the last five years so we're up over five million dollars a year uh, mainly strength on the strength of our relationship with Sport Canada and on the podium and in this year that uh, significant jump allowed us to bring in a lot more development resources and as we uh, as we reported to the members, we have an uh, initial five staff in the Ottawa, uh, primarily focused on development, which to me is really exciting. I think that's that's going to give us so much more capacity down the road. We've obviously been very high, uh, heavily focused on the high performance, uh, but this brings a new new aspect to the office and to the capabilities, and to me really allows us to, to work closer with the provinces, territories, bring resources right down to the club level in conjunction and partnership with the provinces, and uh, it's, it's very exciting from that perspective. Uh, the staff have been all hired. We still we've got one coach yet to hire, and uh, we've got one coordinator position that's vacant right now. So we continue to do that. And uh, it's been a year of building that staff, putting them in place. Uh, we're starting to see the, the benefits of that. But really, you know, I think we have to look four, eight years down the road, we'll really see the true fruits of that in terms of medals at the Olympics and, and performances on the international stage. So that's an exciting part of what's happening. And obviously we had to deal with some bylaw changes this year. Uh, Corporate Canada Act has changed and we had to address, make sure we were in compliance with that and we took the opportunity to clean up our bylaws and streamline a few things there. So administratively, we're moving well, well ahead. Like you said, the event side of things continues to grow. We saw the, the addition of the Tour of Alberta, which was phenomenally supported by the communities, and look forward to that continuing on, as well as uh, the UCI sanctioned race at Delta as part of Super Week. It was great to see in the announcement that they're going to sanction to me the, the women's race as well is, is phenomenal for us. And good news, as yeah. well, very good news. Results-wise, um, I'd say a bit of a lackluster year overall in terms of our international results. Um, to me the highlights though were you know, the para team continues to produce world champions and world cup wins. Uh, Steve Smith on the mountain bike Absolutely. He's a phenom. He's a he's the man in the downhill ground gravity world and a phenomenal talent to have in Canada and it's it's great to see him being recognized for his hard work and his continued progress there as well. You also had some good junior results with uh, as you mentioned earlier Peter DeSera and uh, Kinley Gibson has also done very well. Yes, that's great to see both on the road and uh, on the on the dirt side of things and uh, men and women. That's a, that's phenomenal to see. We always like to see those results coming and I, I think we've got some more in the future years as well. You've made some, uh, you know, when you when you when your communications have really increased and, and, and done, gone well, we discussed that uh, at uh, one of your, your meetings, and now you've hired somebody in marketing. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we've wanted, we want to continue to focus on that. Um, this, this really goes back to a strategy of diversifying our funding. Um, we've had great growth in our funding, but it's been on the backs of Sport Canada and on the podium. And that comes with certain requirements and, you know, to me, the, the area where we really need to develop in terms of capacity and revenue growth is in the discretionary funding and, you know, the marketing resources and the focus there is going to go towards uh, engaging corporate sponsors and partners there. Um, we've got some good work going on to, underway there and I hope we can announce some stuff in the next several months there. But as well, I think we, we want to look at other ways to fundraise and engage the community. Uh, the idea of a foundation I'm really starting to work on to, to support us and really to have more discretionary funding that we can target to areas that Sport Canada and on the podium uh, don't allow us to. We're in a lot of ways tied to exactly what Sport Canada and on the podium. And we're very good at delivering on that, yeah. but we need to get, we need to broaden that umbrella of funding so we can do other things. I, I would assume that the Milton Velodrome is part of that whole story and, and, and does up the ante for, for Cycling Canada to look for corporate sponsors. Well, certainly, and I mean, I think, you know, we cannot, rec we cannot fail to recognize that we actually raised in the last couple of years over $15 million for the capital fund. That's been phenomenal. That's been a great engagement. You know, capital projects are, are very, 
are, are, are great ways to engage the community and, and tie into that. And we found some strong supporters in the, the greater Toronto area to help us there. And the velodrome, it's a reality. We've still got a million dollars or so to, to go on that capital funding, but concrete's up. Steel is up. The trusses were going up this week. Yeah. Um, we're looking forward to actually opening about a year from now and hosting a couple of events uh, within, the, within the next year. So that's phenomenal. And the idea of moving our track program there, that'll really become the center for, for Canada in terms of cycling Canada in its, its actual operations. Sure. And um, the opportunities now, I think, to engage the community further and to really develop programs that are centered around the velodrome and as well as other things like mountain bike, BMX, uh, road that can come out of an academy that we're looking at there will uh, be phenomenal and you just have to look at, you always look back at what Great Britain and Australia, where they came from and it was that first indoor 250 permanent world-class velodrome that really started their progression to being world-class cycling nations and we ourselves see us on that pathway sure. and uh, we've got a long road ahead of ourselves but we've, we've got some very lofty goals that way. Absolutely, we've got some world-class riders who can uh, achieve those goals. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the development plans going forward uh, in that regard? Uh, well, really, I mean, the, we are starting now. I mean, Jacques presented to us this weekend this idea of uh, you know, what, a, what a gold medal plan looks like, what a gold medal profile. So we're starting to actually come up and say, this is the kind of criteria that we need our athletes to have, be able to evaluate them, be able to bring that down to a grassroots level so the coaches can start to identify athletes. Um, that's one aspect of it, very technical. Um, for me, I think we've just got to really develop a strong system, systemic coaching program across the country that's grassroots oriented, starts with you know, the eight, nine, ten year olds and develops them right up to U23 where we know that we've got cohorts, folks that we're working with uh, to bring them to the, to the you know, gold medals for sure. The other aspect of that that we need to look at in terms of is uh, how do we support these riders that are on our national team, um, you know, that they don't have to necessarily depend so heavily on friends and family, their own personal fundraising, or having to take look at taking jobs on the side, or having to actually go to like the, the road and ride for road teams in order to get a salary when we'd rather it would keep them more focused on the track. So we've got to look at ways to fund that part of the development cycle as well. Sure. So your overall assessment of the 2013 AGM? Uh, the AGM was uh, excellent. It went off without a hitch. We got the bylaws passed. We got it. We did the business that we needed to do. The more important part of the weekend is actually the uh, the conference side of things, where we bring the provinces together and we give a, a day and a half of, of opportunities to share best practices, raise the issues, and come up with plans and actions. So the the AGM is the business part of it. Very formality. Things that we need to do. Uh, that went very well. And just a reflection of where we are in terms of our administrative capacities and, and, the, and the business side of the Cycling Canada. Well, it's nice to see that there's stability in the organization and it's moving forward. you got plans going ahead, so we're going to wish you all the best and thanks for spending time with us, Jim. Great. Looking forward to the next four years as president. Thank you very much, Rachel.